Hi good friends, this is Bill. Welcome to my kitchen. And this is really my kitchen, huh? Okay. Um, so I was going to do something really cool, and this is actually a double feature. I'll release them separately, but at the same time, so if you want to see the whole meal. Because what I'm going to do is something really cool. This is chicken cacciatore for the first part, and the second part I'm going to make the risotto to go with it. And these are things, uh, well the risotto is near and dear to my heart. Um, but chicken cacciatore is something that's kind of like, I re was very resistant to try because I think I had it like once or twice when I was a kid. I think my mom made it once and I had it once somewhere. Anyways, long story short, wasn't great, wasn't impressed um, because, you know, we really didn't get into the whole like uh, <clears throat> fresh ingredients, you know, so it's probably some chicken breast baked with uh, ragu spaghetti sauce poured on or I don't know, but all I, can, all I know is that I remember going, really? I have to eat this? And I ate everything as a kid, trust me. Um, so, we're going to kind of fry some chicken, boneless breasts. I got some good sized ones, so I'm going to uh, transfer them to an oven proof dish afterwards and they, they go in the oven for a half an hour just to get everything cooked together. So I've got like literally a little more than half a cup of oil in here coming up to temperature. First thing I'm going to do is dredge it. So i got a bunch of flour. You know, I know I hate saying flour is not expensive, but it's so much better to have it really extra in here so that when you're dredging you're not missing places. I always like to put pepper with my flour because that's probably something I learned like 50 years ago <clears throat> from somebody and I just stuck to it. I think it was Julia Childs or someone that used to do this. So because there's so much flour in here I'm going to go a little crazy. I know. Alright, hands getting tired. <clears throat> And I had to open up a new um, olive oil because I think uh, Starbucks came by to borrow for the one customer that puts olive oil in their coffee. Is that really a thing? I mean, does any, anybody out there try that? Not sure I could do it. All right, take my famous chuck stick, just kind of dance it around here. Okay, that did its job. <clears throat> so these are good sized chicken breasts, so we're probably going to be able to do one at a time. So I'm going to get one going and then we'll break away so you don't have to watch the whole thing. But basically I want a wet hand, dry hand, you know how that goes. So we're going to get the chicken in there, throw some flour on it. all the nooks and crannies. Got a nice sizzle going there, that's what I want to hear. Actually got a small one, maybe I can get to it here. Now the trick to it is Try to leave it alone so it gets kind of nice brown to it, a little color. We're not trying to cook it because we're going to bake it in the oven. Just want to take a break for a second. Yeah, we can do this. I would uh, show you an overview, but guess what? This oil would ruin my camera. That's why I wear my old glasses when I cook on the stove. Just got some tongs here. Let's 
see if you can't just move it aside a little bit there. Perfect. Big oven proof this year. A little too scary in there and turning it down just a little bit. I'm going to flip the first one. You can see I, 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 it's just getting a little brown out. It's all I need. Kind of get that flour cooked on thing. Smells good. Okay, just tell it. I just love this. Smell of cooking, man. Reminds me of when I was a kid. Of course, I don't think I could smell the food over the smell of the cigarettes my mom was smoking while she was cooking. But, you know. Hoping I can get this first one out just to show you, and then I'll finish this up so I don't sit here and watch me <clears throat> cook chicken all day long. It's kind of a wasteful thing, right? Okay, and normally I wouldn't think about olive oil, but you know, cacciatore is an Italian dish, so you, you want that, that nice richness. A robust flavor of the extra virgin olive oil coming through. Not quite. Watch pot never boils, right? That's what I feel like right now. Anyway, don't forget because you are putting flour in here that if uh, pan starts getting a little dry in there, you might have to pour a little more olive oil and just give it a second to get back up to temperature if you're in the middle. Oh yeah, babies are doing great now. You know, if you go to a real meat market and you order, you know, chicken breast, don't don't hesitate to be like, hey, can you, can you trim those? Because, you know, I, I bought these on sale. That's why I'm doing, like, a bunch of chicken recipes. But, um, you know, they don't tend to trim them really well when you buy the package stuff. And, you know, you can't buy a package and then take it to somebody if you don't know how to trim it yourself. You can get your neighbor to it. I would probably do that for my money. So we've got a good brown all the way around. Pretty happy with this. I'm going to stick it in here. Now you see what that looks like. I will see you as soon as I'm done with all this chicken. All right. My chicken is all cooked in the pan, set aside, because now i got to make the sauce. So. We got all this wonderful stuff in our pan here, which is a great starter. I got a whole chopped onion. And I did turn it down and let it cool for a second. Because the sucker was 
definitely hot in here. And I planned it just right that there's really not that much left. There's just as much chicken juice as there is olive oil in here. So you've done a good job. And that's partially because you really got to coat that uh, chicken with flour. And then the oil is going to, you know, kind of stick to the flour and the chicken. So that makes it a beautiful thing. So now I can really smell the chicken, the chickeniness of this. Okay, so I got onion. I turn up just a hair. I got like four to six cloves. I just cut garlic until this thing's full, usually. And you gotta, you know, you want to kind of cut consistently, kind of small, because it is going to be in the oven, but only for 30 minutes. There we go. Just want to start to soften. As soon as that garlic man hits that oil, oh, I love it. cheese of the chicken in there. I'm really trying to keep this really simple because I, I, we want all those great flavors to come out, right? So this is a whole pound of mushrooms and I've quartered them so they're not you know all the same size but if you slice them they tend to fall apart. I really like quartering for this. And you're going to see the difference because when I cook the risotto um, I slice it because that's a whole different meal. All right, so everything in here is doing great. You know the whole story about mushrooms. They absorb all the living water and then they get, give it all up as soon as they start cooking. So basically, I'm just going to let this be for a minute to kind of steam the mushrooms. And I think what I found that really makes me happy about this recipe is you got to find the right wine. And, and I think sometimes um, I'm big, classically you do this with a red wine, right? Well, nobody wants to pour a $20 bottle of red wine in here, right? So I've tried it with white wine um, and I, I get great results and you know it's a nine dollar bottle of wine so what the heck this is a Sauvignon Blanc which is from uh, South Africa um, so I think it's pretty darn good uh, you know there are New Zealand's out there really pumping out some great stuff right now So you've heard that term, you know, it talks about when you're using wine cooking, it deglazes the pan. Yeah, it gets all the crunchies off the bottom, you know. Um, whether it be some of the onion or the garlic or the, the chicken. Number four. And these mushrooms are just starting to cook down. Everyone's looking real happy. Yeah, this, is, this is one of those things I think that uh, you make it once and amazing. Like your neighbors will be knocking on your door. Hey, uh, what's going on over here? You having fun? Any leftovers? Um, leftovers. Thank you. Um, Vince. I don't script this anymore because I don't feel I have to because I pretty much know the story. But um, in fact, if you see, I, 
I do have sheets with quantities in case I mess that up. But then I know, even when I do mess up, I usually put a disclaimer on the, on the video that says, I'm giving you the recipe right in the beginning, so don't, don't, don't take what I say, take what I've written down. But um, um, st something like this, you know, so this is just a really fun night for my wife and I, and I cook four breasts. Why do I do that? Because we're pigs. No, because a lot of the stuff I cook, I can repackage, and two nights later, we're going to finish it. And, you know, um, got all these great things like the snap lid uh, Tupperware kind of stuff. Tupperware is a brand name, I know, I can't think of what else you want to call it. But uh, the snap lids are great because, you know, the ones with the lockdowns on them because um, they're never going to pop open, right? You know, if you've got a refrigerator at work. Other thing you can do for heating it up because you don't want to melt the lid, right? You don't want to melt any of it. So, you know, microwaves have more than one setting. It's not 100% for everything. But what you can do is take one of the pieces of chicken and slice it and put it in with the risotto in your sauce, okay? Um, lots of things you can do. Take some healthier leftovers so you're not going to McDonald's every day. And so you don't melt the lid, what I've learned is take a piece of plastic wrap, put it over the dish, then put the locking lid on. So when you take the locking lid off, you still have a piece of plastic. Now do vent. Don't leave it sealed tight. I always peel up from each side so you got a little gap for the steam to escape. All right, this is done while I've been talking. So I got a cup of my wine. I'm just going to splash it in here, deglaze. And I want to reduce this a little bit. I want to get that alcohol out of there. And you can always use stock if you know you prefer not to use wine to cook with. That's fine. I'm going to get this a good, good boil. Now it smells even better to me. And I think a lot of us are afraid to cook with wine, A, because, like I said, we don't want to waste an expensive bottle of wine. You know, don't be a snob. Go to, the, go to, the, go to your liquor store. Here we have Total Wine, which I totally appreciate. ABC, whatever. Um, and just tell them what you're trying to do, you know. Um, I was actually in a store the other day, my favorite meat market, and there was a lady who wanted to cook a big pot roast, she was going to do it in a big Dutch oven, you know, and so she was getting these two big huge chuck roasts and she had all this, she'd seen this recipe and she was just so unsure what to do and I, I said, excuse me, maybe I can help you kind of straighten this out. So we talked for a few minutes and kind of gave her a better direction and um, I'm hoping she actually subscribed because I gave her one of my business cards and uh, watched some of my videos because don't feel like you're alone. You know, don't, and I think one of the questions she had was, it said, you know, make sure you use a dry red wine. And so she bought this expensive bottle of wine. And I was like, if it's not what you like, if you won't drink that, why would you cook with it? You know, we often think about why would you buy a really, really cheap bottle of wine to cook with that you wouldn't, wouldn't drink. Well, the same thing goes, if it's not your it's not your thing, you know, so, so, and it, it, it's hard because a lot of people don't drink wine as much. I think a lot more people are afraid of wine because of all the mystique and, you know, prices are a little crazy. But, you know, like I know with ABC or Total Wine, they have uh, dedicated wineries all over the world, uh, which are proprietary. So, you know, they guarantee they're going to buy whole bunch of their wine because they can't sell it to anyone else and that brings the price down. So, you know, there's a hundred ways to do this all. Uh, but sometimes you just have to be a brave soul and try a couple things. And I always find it's really hard when you go to like a liquor store and they've got the little tasting gate because, you know, they give you that little plastic cup about this big and everything tastes okay, you know, the first time you try it. You know, it's, it's kind of the long run. And, uh, um, 
you know, it's just it's just matching up right. And you know, and I've actually been in the liquor store, and they, they you know they know me. Um, well, that sounds horrible. Yeah, I'm in there every day. Now, um, uh, what I do, <clears throat> and so they're really good at making making suggestions or asking the right questions. And sometimes if I have a question that's not that person's you know expertise. There's always someone else in the store, and they're not afraid to say, "Hey, let me go get you know John, because John knows more about that type of wine." So you know, they, everyone works together. It's not like they're selling you a car; it's not a commission, and it might really help you out. You know, uh, make a plan maybe once a month. Go go try a different bottle of wine, and just so you don't forget, take a picture of it. And guess what? If it sucks, delete it. If you like it, save it on your camera. That way, when you go back, you can be like. What's well, like this? That's what I like. All right. So this is reduced. The flour has made a nice little sauce. It's only thickened up a little bit. It's not really made a difference, but and it just smells oh so mighty fine. Okay. So what am I going to do now? So I got myself a little jar or a little can. You know these. 15 ounce, 14.5, took out half an ounce of diced tomatoes. And I just I just need some kind of seasoning here. So I know this when it cooks in the oven, it's gonna kind of really make everything happy. And this is, like I said, this is a great recipe because it's not like tomato sauce. I mean, like, I don't mean like, you could use tomato sauce, a can of it, don't get me wrong. But I'm talking spaghetti sauce, sorry, wrong term. Like I said, my mom would have used jar right. That's not what we really want to accomplish here. Alright, this is fresh oregano. And I've got like a tablespoon if you compacted it. Um, we're going to let that kind of cook in here, and that's going to make everything really happy. I have some basil. This is a couple leaves, big leaves of basil that I've chefing on, rolled up and sliced. Oh. And that's a beauty right there. I have just a little bit of scallion. It's another flavor profile, okay? And I'm going to top it off with, you know, a handful of fingers full, maybe not a fistful of Italian parsley that I cut up. You know, it's funny. So, thing to remember is when you use cilantro, because I use a lot of cilantro and parsley tiny parsley, mostly because that's what our rabbits eat. But when you're cooking with it, you cook, you cut the Italian parsley off the stem. With cilantro, you can actually cut the little piece of the stem. So you cut, you, you cut down until there's no more leaves, and then you throw the rest of the stem away with cilantro. Okay, so let's get this. Oh, so happy. Oh, man. So, this is not your mother's uh, cacciatore, for good or bad, but I really like this recipe. So now I'm going to turn this off. Chicken. And these 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 turned out really great. They got good brown to them. You know, I, I played with them for a while, made sure I got what I needed. And I'm gonna ladle some of this just because it is so hot, and then I can always pour some of the rest. 
But we just really want to get this in here. I'm hoping that this is not what you expected and you're really intrigued with it enough to try. I love the color of it. You know, it's just so colorful. And it's all going to cook down to really happy, happy stuff. I don't think I can miss. Yeah, it's pretty toasty. Do the old fashioned way. <clears throat> So now I've got this pot full. <clears throat> We're going to cover it, put it in the oven for half an hour, 350. And when we bring it out, it's going to look totally different and it's going to be fabulous. And so remember, while this is cooking in the oven, I want you to go to my next video, which I'm, like I said, I'm going to release them both at the same time for my risotto because I'm going to clean up the kitchen and get that rolling for you um, so you know what to serve with this because I think that's a really great risotto is so nice and creamy it really really goes well with this so I'll be back in just a couple minutes so I can get everything set up